What's up guys, it's November 21st, 2023. We're gonna do a breakdown of the E-mini. Yesterday we had an uptrend, it was pretty nice. They think the bulls got up leg one, leg two, and a leg three move, and then final flag failed at highs. Here we go, final flag right there. It failed at highs, and today was a gap down. First six bars was a tight trading range, and it went for about an hour. It's easy to get chopped up, and in an environment like this, I would just wait for strong follow through or two bars in one direction. <coughs> Bears do have a slight advantage because of the gap down. Whenever we have a gap down, it's just one big bar in that direction. That's the way I think about it. And then we see this is the minimum bears get. Bar one is the minimum bears need. It is not a bull bar body. Excuse me. And bar two, three, and four show some continuation. I think this was the leg one, leg two move. Uh, not quite. Or I guess if you do it with the continuation. No. It would be profitable, but you wouldn't get the full move. Let me actually try it one other way. I'm going to try it from here to here. Okay, so yeah, if we actually use the leg one, leg two tool, it worked out better. So we have a gap down. That's a bear flag with a top, and bulls fail to get a new high. <clears throat> They're unable to close above bar two's high, and this creates a double top bear flag. Here's a double top, and here's a double bottom. When there's a double top and double bottom, it's best to stay out the markets until we have a strong breakthrough. We got that with this bar, and it broke down for a, a quick leg. Uh, I wouldn't say a leg, maybe like it broke out and had a small continuation. I think this was the magnet for the bears, and it never got hit so this creates a bull gap from this price action to the left there's our gap you draw it in sometimes I don't like drawing it in and I'm like yeah let me just make sure everyone can see what I'm looking at so yeah that's kind of like the gap they kept open and now we have two gaps right we have one two this is a bear gap as well this right here if the market closes above here, I'm thinking we're range bound. If the market tests this level and sells or keeps the gap open, I'm thinking trend. This I was also looking for a leg one, leg two move off this, and I did get trapped here, but I, I hit out quick because this is bullish. This was a strong move up from lows, and we had an uptrend yesterday, so it's good to keep that in mind. Uh, if we have an uptrend, maybe there's more buyers today in this type of context like is this the start of a huge collapse down or is this maybe a pullback into a range or something a little more bullish so bulls start to close the gap and they eventually get the close it takes them a while after they get the close they only drift up a little bit higher until it sells for three legs down this is a really nice wedge bottom I didn't trade this but if you did that's a nice one if you took this wedge bottom, your entry would be right here. You guys can see that, right? That would be your entry. So you put your buy stop order one tick above here. You get filled on this bar, and your target is the recent high and then a breakout. So it would go something like this. And then you would go for 50% and then 100%. I had a, I was targeting pretty much the bull side. I was bullish and I was targeting gap close all day. I, I'm slightly red, like minus 50 bucks. I got chopped up. Of course, again, EOD, I got chopped up. Anyways, <clears throat> once um, I was done trading for a while, I missed most of this. I was because of FOMC was right here. So I didn't want to get involved. But anyways, this is three legs down and creates a nice bull flag. I think that's a really good long back to recent highs. If you don't get recent highs, try to reject. It's good to sell. This was FOMC minutes, and then we got kind of stuck within this leg and this bar. FOMC minute bar is right here and right here. And look at that. We pretty much just arranged within that price for the rest of the day. This was a it was a limit order market here. So this beginning price action really was 
the majority of the day. We had a small leg down and one leg, maybe two legs. Maybe this is a separate leg count. One, two, three, and the last leg fails. So yeah, it was a pretty not. It was a pretty boring day, honestly. It was a range day. It was an inside day. We had FOMC minutes that led to nothing, but we know it was going to range because of the first six bars. So it shouldn't be anything surprising. Something I'm getting better at doing, I th and I think it'd help add some context to your day if you're trading the indices or the E-mini. I put a line at the open now, and I just on range days we're gonna. It's gonna get tagged a lot. It's gonna be a magnet, so I'm just working on learning how to trade their appropriate magnets for the day. On range days, the open is a good magnet, so it's for me. It's gonna be trading to the open. So like once we get, and then like let's say we start to trend higher, then I'd go for something like that. I have to really work it out and do homework on it. I'm just thinking out loud. Don't please don't full pour any trades off this. We're just talking, learning. But yeah, it was a pretty easy day. Um, buy low, sell high. If you pretty much bought long, hell, you made money. Unless you bought, <laughs> unless you bought up here, then that sucks. But but that's not a bad trade because if we were trending, then this would be a breakout. So I shouldn't be laughing because I'm sure I will be. I have bought many highs and I will buy many highs. I have shorted many lows and I will still short many lows. On the daily chart, we're finally getting that pullback, which I've just which. I mean, the last time we got a pullback. Okay, I wanted to talk about pullbacks. Something I forgot to mention in yesterday's video. Uh, I'm just gonna do it really quick so it'll add context to today. I forgot to mention this on yesterday's video, but I was looking at the pullback length for the strength of the trend. So this pullback was really short, and it made a new high. So this was a so we're still strong, and then we pulled back into the EMA. And the pullback got a little bit deeper, and then we made another new high. And then now look how long this pullback is. You so as you see, like super short, trend strong, starting to get weak. Trend is almost into a trading. This is a trading range with bullish price action. And then we break out. So, and then look again here. Oh, breakout, small pullback, bigger pullback bigger pullback and then a climactic move up and it sold off. So what I mean by these pullbacks is that as the trend progresses the pullbacks get longer and pullbacks reversal a pullback or <laughs> how do I say this okay so the market trends higher right and a pullback starts because people have to take profits so they start to sell when see they start the sell because they have to take profits but then however the market was very bullish so they buy right, right away let's say they start to sell here and bears see that the last pullback made the money this pullback bears made money so i think that's what helped this uptrend is that they were getting trapped because they previously had made money pullbacks so this is the order it starts trend well, that side takes profits that profit will either be a pullback or a reversal. And that's the that's the bet. Is it a pullback or a continuation? Is it a reversal or a continuation? So what am I trying to get at? The longer the trend goes, the more people could think it, the, excuse me, the longer the pullback becomes, the more chances it has of becoming a, a reversal or a minor trend or a range bound environment. It does, we don't like just go from uptrend to downtrend would go from uptrend to range and that happens in the form of a pullback because technically we never to be completely bullish I mean bearish we would have to break this low so super small pullback getting bigger pullback got bigger pullback got huge and started taking out minor intraday structure or coming down and didn't actually take it out but look after the huge pullback bears made money and then bulls came back again pullback got deep so after the biggest pullback we gap down and we're range bound big up big down yeah so that was just, all I want to say is like pay attention to the pullbacks and trends if it's getting longer and choppier maybe start to take profits at highs or just think then and, and leave a runner and be open to getting back in later in the day or if it's the third flag final flag maybe it's not a good trade that's up to you to decide but 
when you're reading a price action, check out just in a trending environment. Look at the pullback lengths. I mean, this pullback was super long and it led to a profit a, a good breakout. So, a pullback is a pullback until it reverses. Most re most reversals will end up minor anyways. What we think is major will be minor, and that's what we got here. I think bears are looking for a major reversal. It ended up being minor and trapped them. So back to the daily chart. What I wanted to talk about with the, with that pullback. I can click it is this was the first pullback and it led to a profitable trade and just applying the same lesson we talked about on the five minute chart I think that maybe we get a little bit of a deeper pullback maybe a leg one leg two if this becomes a high one or if this is a high one usually sellers above anyways so it'd be better to buy a high two because this is the start of a bear channel right now we can we can I kind of want to just leave the well, there really is no channel yet, unless it was like this. This is a really tight bear show. We can just leave it like that and see what happens tomorrow. I'm going to do it on the hourly chart to be a little more accurate. Okay, so I'm not trading this channel. I just want to see what's going to happen. Because right now we're in a bear channel for a pullback. So what I mean by that is a bear channel eventually going to have a, break, a bullish breakout or we're going to break down. I mean, this is a really tight channel, so it's not. I don't really expect this to stay in it. Maybe we just pop out and keep going, or we break down. But I'm gonna try and start adding channels to my charts, and just the market's always in a channel. And a channel, so like this is a trading range. A channel is just a trading range with an angle towards it. So the market's literally always in a channel, whether that channel be flat like today. We had a flat channel today. And yesterday, we still had a channel. It just had a huge upward slope. So, and these channels are way harder. They're pretty hard to see. Like, I would not have this. If I, if I was to draw a channel, it would have to be like that because these would be my two pivots. There's no way for me to have this line here until it gets put in. So, I'm going to be practicing with channels because the market's always channeling. See? flat channel broad downside channel we talked about that channel here's a flatter channel and it, it, when we start to do this it makes the market interesting because yeah it's bullish but look so just look at the context this channel adds I'm gonna delete this I'm gonna delete the email I'm not gonna delete the email but okay so okay so this is a trend but then the market goes sideways. Yeah, we had a way more bullish. But did we have more bullish pressure? Because look at this leg. The bull side was easier to make. And I think this trend and this gap up influenced this price action. Then we gap up again and start a new channel back. And this is what I wanted to check. I think to the 50% level. Oh, no. We went straight up to the channel lows. We went straight. I didn't even catch that. Look. So we gapped up. Channeled back down to this channel low and then what we made a new we've been look at that so that's a double bottom bull flag so it just helps adding context I'm not saying I'm gonna be able to do this live but just like just how this just added a little more context for me so let's see if we can try and do it live what are we on the five minute chart so we have this channel we already talked about I'm going to delete these red lines. We have this channel that we've been in. So uh, we can go like this is this looks like one channel and then the market broke out from that channel and we've been in a tighter channel. I'm gonna do it something like, yeah, I guess like that is the fair way. So see, all these channel prices are being encompassed right now. It's all really ranging. It's just how do we, I kind of like this channel with the idea that it's trading in the upper channel and makes it more parabolic. It gives the idea that it's a little more parabolic, but yeah, however, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that was a 
lesson on channels uh, <laughs> and pullbacks and everything and price action I hope you guys are studying happy holidays turn on the notifications I drop these videos every day at 3 p.m. and yeah let's get it let's bring in the year strong we don't have to make big profits but we have to prepare ourselves for next year you know start taking notes think about um, what plays do you have on range days what plays do you have on trend days what characteristics do those plays give you like there's two differences I'm not gonna say them because I say them all the time without pointing them out but there's a very big characteristic between trend days and range days and it has to do with gaps so you guys uh, have a good night if you know the answer drop the answer in the comments have hit the follow button have a good night I'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye